I want to go across to Harshwardhan Shringla, former foreign secretary in the government of India. Mr. Shringla, welcome. It's great to have you with us. You know, Prime Minister Modi is in Moscow at a time when leaders of 32 nations of NATO uh, are meeting in Washington, D.C. And this is Prime Minister Modi's first state visit in his third term. So could you start by explaining to our viewers your sense of the significance of Prime Minister Modi picking Russia for his first state visit. Usually in this past two terms, he went to one of our neighboring countries. He's gone to Russia at a time when NATO is meeting in Washington. What, your assessment of the significance of this state visit. Mr. Shingla, welcome. Thank you, uh, Rahul. Well, I mean, you have to look at it in context. You know, the Prime Minister's first visit was to the G7 after he uh, was sworn in for the third term in office. And he had an extensive interaction with most of the leaders of the Western world uh, at that meeting. And uh, the fact that he's going to Russia also has to be seen in the context of our strategic partnership with Russia, which provides for an annual summit between the two leaders. Now, so far, we've had 21 summits. And President Putin had visited India in December 2021. So that's almost three years uh, or two and a half years since his visit. And so, um, you know, Prime Minister's visit in Russia, I would say, is due. Um, obviously, um, you know, there are many other factors. Uh, you know, one is our bilateral relationship. Russia is an important partner in our energy equation, in terms of defense, in our trade, people-to-people -people ties. Um, we also cannot discount the fact that uh, the geopolitical, global geopolitics will be part of the discussion. Um, Prime Minister Modi has been in constant touch with both President Zelensky and President Putin. Uh, his his uh, famous words that this is not an era of war and that we should deal with conflicts uh, through diplomacy and dialogue, I think in many senses sets the tone. If you recall, the G20 summit that India presided over also had in its outcome document uh, among the first paragraphs some of these uh, defining features of our own approach towards the Russia-Ukraine Prime conflict. Minister Modi last so visited not Russia in September 2019. Since then, Russia and China have become more tightly in, uh, locked in embrace. India and the United States have built on their strategic partnership. So let's spend a moment on the troubles that China is giving India along the line of actual control and the role potentially Russia could play in trying to help India deal with Beijing? Well, you know, um, India has always seen Russia as one of the poles in a multipolar world. But, the, but the, one of the consequences of the Ukraine conflict has been that Russia has been drawn more closely into China's orbit, making it less of an independent pole by itself. Now, our enhanced engagement with Russia, I think, is to draw it out and also, you know, to try and get it to play as a moderating factor in the, uh, you know, India-China relationship and the fact that Russia being a close, uh, you know, uh, strategic partner of ours can also present a perspective that may not be always evident. So I think from that perspective also, this visit is important. Uh, I think it, it, it underlines our emphasis on balancing between the, between the poles our efforts to maintain strategic autonomy, but also our efforts to somewhat, uh, you know, play a sort of a, a role of uh, getting Russia to be more independent. If you notice, President Putin has tried to ensure that he's not only dependent on China, he's made his visits to Vietnam, to North Korea. And I think it's important that uh, there is some, uh, you know, political space for him to, to maneuver that would allow him uh, to, to engage other partners uh, other than China. How is the establishment in the United States likely to look at this visit? It becomes more consequential because of the timing. This is when there's a NATO meeting, as I said, happening in uh, Washington, D.C. So how is the U.S., which wants to pull India as much as possible into its embrace and into its fold, likely to look at Prime Minister Modi making this very significant state visit uh, to Moscow? Last year, Prime Minister Modi visited the United States. Uh, it was a very uh, successful visit. Uh, we concluded some major deals, including for the first time, cutting edge technologies such as the G144 engine for India's uh, light combat aircraft was provided. 
We signed the initiative on, on critical and emerging technologies that gives us access to obviously cutting edge technologies. Uh, so we have a relationship and we have a very strong relationship with the United States. That relationship is growing. And, and I think uh, the U.S. Uh, in many senses will understand uh, the you know, context in which our visit is taking place, the Prime Minister's visit is taking place. I think one of those factors is also to ensure that there is a certain amount of um, effort to um, you know, put this conflict in some context and try and uh, try and redress some of the issues that would bring the sides closer. I mean, the recent uh, meeting in uh, Switzerland, which is designed to sort of act as a peace conference, wasn't very successful because Russia wasn't there. India is one of the few major countries that straddles that ideological divide between North and South and East and West. Between uh, the Western powers and Russia and China, uh, we are uh, the one uh, player that can, that can actually contribute. And I think Prime Minister Modi is... Uh, looking at that uh, factor, he is looking at seeing how India uh, can bring its own approach, uh, uh, you know, Vasudeva Kutumbakam into this context and see how we can help in resolving that uh, issue uh, that has really uh, not only can Prime Minister uh, brought Modi potentially the heart play Europe, a role in trying to uh, impact or shape the Russia-Ukraine conflict? Or do you think that is so complex that there's very, very little a uh, player or a country like India can do? given uh, the clear differences between Russia and Ukraine at the moment? Yes, I think, uh, you know, uh, nobody is saying that you're playing the role of a mediator. Uh, but if you see in the current context, many of the leaders who actually try to do some shuttle diplomacy, try to contribute to resolving the, the conflict are today not uh, active any longer or not seen as as impartial to the extent that they can make that uh, make that uh, effort and today i think it leaves very few countries with that uh, i would say uh, you know ability to uh, to bring the two sides closer together so mediation is not the issue the, the issue is really understanding both sides uh, in some detail and trying to find uh, areas where uh, you know both sides could be nudged into a more reasonable stance that could lead ultimately to a resolution to the conflict so I'm not saying that uh, that uh, you know the visit is a mediatory sort of effort. I'm saying that one of the issues that would be and one of the major issues that would form the discussion between Prime Minister Modi and President Putin would be, uh, you know, how to how to look at uh, bringing this uh, conflict to an end. President Putin himself has said he's open. Finally, remaining, uh, you know, how the conflict could be resolved. What do you see as being the most critical takeaway from this uh, bilateral state visit? What do you see as being the key uh, items in the agenda and the takeaways our audience should be looking out for? I think the word bilateral is correct. Uh, we will be looking, in my view, at uh, trade, which is a very important factor. Don't forget, Russia contributes to one third of our total energy imports. We have imported uh, about $62 billion of Russian, uh, you know, energy uh, and fuel uh, in, in, the, in the financial year 2024. Um, and I think, uh, you know, there is an imbalance because obviously Russia has exported only $4 billion out of that $66 billion. So uh, we have to redress that balance. And one way to redress this balance is also to look at a rupee-ruble arrangement where uh, the surplus uh, that Russia holds in that trade balance can be invested in India. After all, the two leaders in 2019 in Vladivostok agreed that Russia would, I mean, or both sides would invest, and the investment figure would be about $50 billion by 2025. The two leaders would try and make that possible through some sort of a currency arrangement. Um, and definitely, we will try and increase our own access to the Russian market through agricultural exports, uh, exports of increased pharmaceuticals, the engineering goods, etc. So we need to redress that trade balance, which is today very much in Russia's favor, uh, and to look at how we can increase investments. We also look, uh, have to look at the defense side, because after all, Russia does account for about 60% of our defense platforms today. Uh, there have been delays in some supplies of spare parts. So a logistics agreement that could uh, you know, streamline some of these supplies, try and get uh, you know, some of our much needed items uh, you know, ongoing, I think would also be part of that effort. And of course, needless to say, there is also the um, you know people-to-people -people factor, um, that uh, the cultural side of it, the educational side of it, uh, and uh, finally, technology. Technology is an important aspect of the relationship. We are working on space. We are working on nuclear energy. 
uh, what is it that we can do to enhance that technology. So I think the outcomes would be on those lines. Bilateral issues that are of great importance to India, which gives us flexibility, which is part of our strategic autonomy policy, and I think uh, which we have to ensure that we are working with all concerned and we are not working with only one uh, or the other side of our uh, partnerships. Uh, and, and of course, uh, uh, you know, from the Russian side, uh, the defense side has been decreasing. Uh, we have been diversifying our own defense collaborations, uh, including with the West. Um, but at the same time, the energy mix has gone up with Russia providing much more of our energy requirements than before. And I think that is very important, not only in stabilizing our prices in India at a very difficult time, but also stabilizing global prices. Okay. So our imports of energy from Russia have been seen in that context. You've set the context for this uh, conversation very well. Harshwardhan Shringla, appreciate you taking out time to join us. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you. Look more at the key takeaways in a bilateral context while multilateral issues and geopolitical issues will also get discussed. I want to welcome uh, Tatiana Kokreva, senior journalist from Russia. We've got Colonel Ajay Shukla, well-known strategic affairs expert. Nanda Nuni Krishnan is with us, one of our top experts on the India-Russia relationship. I want to go across to Tatiana Kokreva first because this is when Prime Minister Modi and uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin will be at dinner. Um, we've spoken a lot about the expectations within the Indian government from Russia's perspective, Tatiana. Can you give us a sense of the expectations in Moscow around Prime Minister Modi's uh, meeting? This is the sixth time uh, it seems he's come to Moscow, uh, to Russia. Uh, he's been uh, in 2015, December, July, then 17, 18, 19. So this is the sixth uh, visit now. So what's your sense of the expectations in Moscow around the Prime Minister's visit? Well, it's nice to, to join you again. Uh, you know, I think that uh, first and foremost, we have to say that the Prime Minister, this time Prime Minister Modi, has been extremely lucky with the weather. Um, that he didn't catch the we've been having crazy weather before this so he's extremely lucky to have come today of all things but i think the expectation generally um in in moscow is uh, very upbeat you know we've heard from the kremlin saying that we take into account the general you know fr this friendly historically friendly relationship between moscow and new delhi and um, the very fact that this is, if I'm not mistaken, the first foreign trip that Prime Minister is taking uh, since uh, winning the election, you know, that sends a, a message and we're receiving it out here. So very excited. Um, you know, the trade has increased during the past year. There's been so many improvements in that relationship and it's been very fruitful for both countries. So we're, we're looking forward to see what comes out of this visit. Gaurav Savant is reporting live from Moscow on Prime Minister Modi's state visit to Russia. Uh, Gaurav, um, the key expectations in all the briefings and meetings that have happened with officials from the Ministry of External Affairs, what are they telling you? What are the most likely key takeaways from Prime Minister Modi's visit to Moscow this time? Rahul, the aim of this visit is to take the relationship to a new level and keep it futuristic. Traditionally, it's been a very, very strong relationship between India and Russia over decades. Uh, from the 50s, when it started building up and gathering steam to the 1970s, you know the history, 1971 war, India-Russia pact held India in good stead through the Kargil War of 1999 and beyond. Uh, but it is not just restricted now to the Brahmos supersonic cruise missile. India and Russia want to take forward this relationship in critical technology from the drawing board stage. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi, as he meets the Russian President Vladimir Putin over this dinner, the aim, Rahul, is that the two talk about taking this relationship, making the transformational swift, uh, shift and switch. What does that mean? That Indian scientists and Russian scientists sit together and start thinking of futuristic technologies at the drawing board stage. That is what we were told. The students do their research together in India and in Russia. 
build it together and then manufacture it together some components in russia some components in india and they put it together to export to the world make for each other make uh, it and then export it to the world like brahmos space cooperation uh, nuclear cooperation defense cooperation remains strong economy remains the bedrock uh, in this transformation now the rupee ruble as you understand better the trade deficit uh, 60 billion dollars in russia's favor just 5 billion dollars worth of india trade how do you change that how do you get rupee ruble exchange which is the biggest hindrance apart from western sanctions on russia taking this relationship forward how do you overcome those problems that is the conversation that is taking place right now at the level of the dinner and then subsequently the directions that come from here rahul uh, from the indian prime minister to his delegation and the russian president to his delegation will set the tone for the conversation tomorrow morning and take it forward the aim is to have a result oriented approach a vision document may or may not come uh, right now but keep it keep it as uh, you know work in progress to ensure that there are positive outcomes not just in thought but in action on ground rahul i won't hold you back from your live reportage gorov savan thank you very much for joining us michael kugelman joins us our director at the south asia institute the wilson center uh, at washington dc this is a state visit that's happening at a time when nato leaders will be gathering in washington dc for a nato meeting from the 9th and 9th to the 11th of july uh, from uh, washington uh, what's the view on prime minister modi choosing russia for his first state visit in his third term Uh, well certainly uh you know here in washington uh it's seen as uh, as as not a, as not a good thing um but i think that there's there's a lot to this story um but I, my my broad view here is that the pageantry and the theater and the optics that we're going to be seeing over the next few days uh, in moscow have an intended audience that goes far beyond india and russia and one of the main intended audiences is indeed uh, washington and washington knows that um but i i think that you know, the visit and, and and the state of the india russia relationship now might not bode as poorly for the west and particularly the us as as some might suggest i mean indeed i know that one of the goals of this summit is to as your as as garan said take the relationship to another level but i think that the the, the main goal of this summit is to essentially reinforce the strength and importance of the of the relationship in its current state and the current state of the relationship is one that certainly is very strong but it also has indicated certain things one is that um you know the trend lines of the relationship have not been as as positive as they had been in previous years we've seen for instance india's share of uh of arms imports from russia have gone down whereas uh, india's uh, security ties with the us have never been stronger so i think that's a significant point and i th- i would another point i would make here is that um the 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 india russia relationship does i think put a bit of a check on growing russia china cooperation which is seen as a good thing here in washington if russia wants to continue strong partnership with india which i imagine it does there are certain things that it'll be, need to be careful about doing and that includes among other things being sure not to suggest that it would be willing to take china's side in the potential conflict between india and china so bottom line yes uh, washington is clearly not happy about this visit but it's accepted it just as it's accepted the fact that india will continue to have a significant relationship with russia it will continue to import oil it will continue to have that security relationship but i think the view here and this i share this view as well is that the contours of the india russia relationship today Uh, are not as strong and not as sharp as they had been uh, some years ago. Nandan Dhoni Krishnan you accept this that while uh, India Russia continue to remain important partners the relationship isn't a patch of what it used to be before India became far closer to the US than it was in the past and that's really the new reality you can say what you will but uh, the fact is that India and the US today are closer than India and Russia and Russia is drawing closer uh to beijing uh, than to india firstly uh, rahul thank you for inviting me uh broadly speaking yes i mean i agree with you but <clears throat> let's not forget that uh, russia is not the soviet union so i think uh, comparing the russian relationship which we had when the soviet union was around to the current relationship with the united states is a bit of apples and oranges so that is one aspect the second part is that i think uh, it is self evident that uh, india's primary uh, concern is india's development 
Uh, in that, the United States and the West have a significant role to play. Uh, but uh, given the geopolitics of Asia, India is not about to forget what uh, Russia can contribute. And I think Michael correctly pointed out that Russia playing neutral in the conflict between India and Russia should be seen in Washington as a positive sign, not only in Washington, but across the globe, because that would mean that there is one more check to China's emergence as a hegemon, at least on the Asian continent. And uh, I also think that you have to take the size of the Russian economy into view before passing judgment on the depth and uh, width of the relationship with Russia. Given that Russia is a uh, one and a half trillion economy, India is already a three trillion economy. So the relationship of the past when Soviet Union was the giver and India the taker, I think may have actually changed. And this is the new reality that I think Mr. Modi and Putin will be discussing. Colonel Shukla, from a weapons perspective, from the lens of the Indian armed forces, which are the weapon systems which you think India would still want to buy from Russia? Or do you think, given the reality of how in the recent past, uh, Russia hasn't really been a reliable supplier of supplies and ancillaries that India really shouldn't be, apart from things like the S-400 uh, missile defense system where you don't really get that kind of a system from anywhere else. So apart from things which you can't pick up from anywhere else, are there still weapon systems that India is actively talking to and should be buying from Russia in your view? Uh, just uh, one quick point before I answer your question, and that is that uh, the India-Russia annual summit has been a feature of the relationship from 2000 uh, when, uh, you know, the disastrous presidency of uh, Boris Yeltsin came to an end and Putin and uh, Vajpayee uh, started off this annual tradition and it has continued without interruption for a long time. It's a, it's a, it's a highly symbolic sort of uh, manifestation of their uh, actual closeness. Uh, as far as the uh, the weaponry that you're talking about, uh, India is already getting weaponry from the Soviet, uh, from uh, Russia, uh, that it was uh, sort of not likely to get from America. The S-400, you mentioned yourself, uh, but there is also the, the strategic uh, weapon systems, uh, the SSN that India will be building, that's uh, this, uh, the submarine. Nuclear submarine. Uh, the, these are all uh, weapon systems that are critical to India's defense. Uh, and, you know, the, 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 the American side uh, is far less inclined to play ball on these weapon systems than the Russian side. Uh, as far as the, the China relationship goes, uh, it goes without saying everybody in the, on the panel has been, I'm, I note, unanimous on the on the fact that uh, India needs to balance the relationship with China with the Russia relationship. So I think uh, all in all, uh, this two and a half year gap has been uh, sort of uh, not a very welcome sign, uh, but it is uh, ascribable to the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, to the sort of Ukraine war and so on. Uh, I think that the uh, relations with the, the Russians will level back again, fall on an evil keel, and uh, the weapon systems that you mentioned will continue to flow. Nandan, how do you view President Putin's uh, mind on the question of India, given that circumstances are forcing him closer to Xi Jinping in China? in the Russian state and in the president's own mind, how do you think they perceive India and Prime Minister Modi at this moment? Well, uh, if anyone can see into Putin's mind, I mean, that is the first challenge. Uh, but uh, I think as the Russian state goes, Putin is one of the strongest votaries in the Russian establishment for a robust India-Russia relationship. As in any country, there are multiple views in the Russian establishment, and uh, they are not all necessarily favorable towards India. So the fact that the head of the government is invested in this relationship, personally invested, uh, speaks a lot. Uh, 
I also think that the Russian establishment is well aware of the speculation across the globe about the Russia-China relationship. And given the mentality they have inherited from the Soviet Union, I doubt that they would be willing to play second fiddle to uh, any other power. And uh, after all, I mean, just as a sort of historical aside, they walked away from a relationship in the, with the West because they did not want to be a junior partner. So I cannot see them agreeing to be a junior partner to China. But let's ask that question so, to Tatiana. Tatiana, the yes. sense in the world is that now circumstances are forcing President Putin, who's a very proud man, leading a great country, to have to play second fiddle to Beijing and to Xi Jinping. I think, um, you know, in general, when it comes to making sense of, you know, and the, this is the beautiful part about, um, you know, the relationships between Russia and China and Russia and India, is that in the BRICS block, the, there is an understanding that we accept, you know, the the relationships are kind of, there's no one standard, which is uh, kind of, the definition of all of the foreign blocks, the Western blocks, there's always, you know, one standard of relationship and everybody adheres. And it's usually the American one. Um, so the worst thing uh, to do in this situation, I think, is to judge any type of relationship, the relationship between Moscow and, uh, and Beijing, the relationship between Moscow and New Delhi by Western standards and try to look, you know, you can't see the relationship from outside. Uh, and and usually the uh, what you call you know the view from you know the um, perspective of the world it's usually um, not even a perspective it's kind of uh, a narrative that everybody is trying to push uh, to uh, you know to kind of meddle in that relationship uh, but I think that's the strength of the, um, the communication within BRICS block is that everybody accepts you know everybody uh, we're pushing for a multipolar world uh, with the both India and Moscow have been extremely successful within this, okay. within accepting each other, you know. Michael Kugelman, you know, the fact is, and I remember from my time while I was reporting from Washington, D.C. on the Prime Minister's state visit there, there was, there was some concern around India's uh, relationship continuing with Russia in the way that it was. But, you know, Colonel Shukla spoke of the submarine, nuclear submarine project, uh, the S-400 missile defense system. So a lot of these weapon systems are pieces of equipment which despite increasing ties between Delhi and DC, we, we still can't buy from Washington. And therefore, if India requires that kind of equipment to take care of its national security, there's only one place that you can pick it up from, uh, which is Moscow. And therefore, that's naturally a relationship India cannot ever give up on. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, the current administration um, here in Washington is playing a long game when it comes to figuring out this this challenge of the Russia-India defense relationship. Uh, the current administration, and of course, you know, we have an election here later in the year. We could have a new administration in a few months. Things could change. But for now, the view is to try to, over the longer term, try to make the case that the U.S. can start to provide uh, the types of uh, equipment and weaponry that India has long depended on from Russia. But obviously, right now, that's not an option because, as you say, there's certain things that the U.S. is not be able is not in a position to provide that uh, Russian can certainly provide and at a better cost point uh, for sure. So this is a long-term challenge for for the U.S. government. But you know, I, I would say this that right now, you know, the, the 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 only major concern that the U.S. has about India's relationship with Russia is not the the oil imports. I can accept that. We've heard many times the administration say that it's not violating the sanctions regime. The the main the problem that the U.S. has is the fact that you have Russian military equipment and defense equipment in India's system, so to speak, at a moment when U.S. arms and military equipment are flowing into India at a rate that they haven't before, and the concerns about the national security implications for the U.S. of having that reality of all these arms, sensitive equipment going into India at a moment when you have this Russian equipment there as well. It may be a misplaced fear, but it's an understandable concern that U.S. officials will have, and that will continue so long as India and Russia continue to have that, uh, that defense relationship. But again, uh, the administration is playing a long game here and wants to hope in the coming years, not the coming weeks 
and months, the coming years, to be able to be in a position, along with some of its other partners that have been increasingly selling weapons to India, like France and Israel, that these countries can start replacing. Let me put Russia that question to, to Colonel Shukla. Is this an irreversible trend, you think, the fact that we're getting closer to countries like the United States, France, Israel, when it comes to purchase a weapon, moving away from Russia, and at some point in time, the disentanglement could be near complete? Or do you think that there will always be some equipment like uh, the nuclear submarines or like the missile defense system, which only Russia will give? The flip to this is that maybe Russia no longer is producing the kind of high-end weapon systems which India would need to buy from Moscow Given a few years from now, a lot of what uh, they're picking up may actually be coming from Beijing. Uh, no, I don't think uh, that is exactly the case. Uh, I think that uh, the India-Russia relationship continues to dabble in realms that uh, are not open to uh, other countries uh, and which India is not going to get from uh, the Western powers. You would have noticed that this AUKUS uh, agreement, Australia, UK and, and uh, uh, the United States, uh, have talked about transferring nuclear submarine technology to Australia and building uh, basically UK designed submarines for Australia. But India is not included in that, uh, in that uh, arrangement. So uh, there is there is a very strong set of relationships like uh, like the AUKUS and the Five Eyes that uh, that bind together the Western powers and India is not invited to that uh, thing at least not yet not in the immediate future either. Uh, it is, however, invited to get Russian equipment. It has uh, already done two tranches of. Uh, training uh, uh, come operation of the INS Chakra uh, Soviet submarine, uh, the the sort of uh, Russian submarine, I beg your pardon. Uh, and, uh, you know, that is something that uh, there is a high degree of comfort in, in the relationship between Russia and, uh, and India in these particular aspects. So I think that the, the, the change, this great uh, in new alignment of India and the West is some, sometimes overstated. Okay. Uh, the arrangement with Russia continues and is, I mean, I don't see indications of it falling through. Okay, so we've heard different perspectives. We've heard from Delhi, we've heard from Moscow, we've heard from uh, Washington DC. We'll track Prime Minister Modi's state visit very closely.